guys, welcome to Cleaning Up History, where my goal is preserving headstones and cemeteries, as well as sharing forgotten stories of the past. Warning, this video may contain adult content and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about a story that, I, that I've been um, reading up on for a couple of weeks now. I found many, many different newspaper articles um, about this story. <coughs> Excuse me. And I also have a pretty bad sinus infection, so I apologize in advance for the coughs and the sniffles. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get this video out there for you guys um, to share with you guys. So, um, today's story is about a man by the name of Glenn Mays, M A Y E S, who was born in 1870. Um, Many of the newspaper articles that I found regarding this particular story, they um, compared him, they kept calling him a modern day Enoch Arden. And I didn't know who Enoch Arden was, so, you know, I had to stop what I was doing. This is what takes me so long to do research, because I get distracted by little things like that, and I have to go figure out what that was. So, apparently, Enoch Arden um, was actually a poem written in 1864. It's a pretty sad poem, once you read it. Um, it's about a man who um, was shipwrecked for 10 years, and then when he comes back, he finds that his wife had remarried and had children and um Enoch Enoch was heartbroken basically um I don't know why the art the newspapers compared Glenn Mays' story to Enoch Arden because it's not really similar at all I, I don't know um Enoch Arden kind of sounds like a a famous Hollywood sto uh, story that stars Tom Hanks but um that's what beside the point <coughs> so getting back to Glenn Mays um, Glenn was born in 1870 and um, his family was from Newberry South Carolina area and they were you know pretty um, pretty well to do uh, Glenn had a brother who was a doctor um, his family did pretty pretty decent for their self and uh, when Glenn came to the East Tennessee area, he met a girl by the name of Katie Bennett, and she was actually from the Whitley, Kentucky area, and um, Katie was from a, a decent family also. Katie had a twin brother who was a doctor. Um, they were from the Boston community right there across the Jellicoe border. But he, he met and married Katie Bennett. And um, Glenn, what he did was he would buy and start off different mining um, operations. And um, him and Katie, they bought a home and lived in Knoxville, Tennessee. Their address was actually 1141 North Broadway Street in Knoxville. Um... But Glenn had purchased a, an area to develop for mining in the um, Titus Hollow community. Um, and he had a cabin here in this area so that when he would come on business for his mine, he would have a place to stay. And it wasn't unusual for him to just come and stay at his cabin alone for for several weeks at a time while he's doing business, you know, mining business here. So, Katie wasn't, you know, very shocked at the fact that he hadn't been home in a few days. She just assumed he was here in Campbell County working. And, um, so, in, in 1921, one day, someone came across Glenn's cabin, which had been completely burned to the ground. And um, upon investigating, they found what they believed was the charred remains of Glenn inside this cabin. Detectives determined that um, he had possibly been robbed. They found, I guess, a briefcase or something that was open. And um, 
I'm not sure if it was burnt completely to the ground, how they came up with all these conclusions, but, um, Glenn had apparently made a lot of enemies because he was against, um, illegal distribution of alcohol and there was a lot of moonshiners in the area. So he had made a lot of enemies within the moonshining community of Campbell County. So at first it was assumed that Glenn was killed by moonshiners. <clears throat> and then um, article after article states that the body, his body that was found in the cabin had been decapitated. His head had been removed. And his body completely charred. Um, no way to identify the remains. The articles, keep in mind, a lot of times I'll do a story and I base it off of newspaper articles I read and then months or years later I'll find newspaper articles com with conflicting information than what I'd originally based it off of. These newspapers were literally tabloids. They just, they published anything to get people's attention. So there may or may not be truth to the newspaper articles. But uh, with that being said, these newspaper articles talked about how Glenn's body had been um, decapitated and um, talked about possible suspects. And then at one point, um, I guess the sheriff of Campbell County at this time had just went in and purchased with others um, a dog to track. And um, they used this, this nice expensive tracking dog, took it to the cabin and they supposedly, the dog tracked down where the murder had went to. At one point, they had arrested like 13 people for the murder of Glenn Mays. And, um, four people were actually indicted for his murder. Francis Sharp, Burt Dean, Pryor Dowell, and Rose Smith. They were actually indicted for the murder of, um, Glenn B. Mays. And in August of 1921, um... The charred body, which was found in the cabin, was taken to um, Glen and Kate's home on 1141 North Broadway Street in Knoxville. Funeral services um, were had for Glen, and the body was buried in Greenwood Cemetery in Knoxville, Tennessee. Articles later stated that they had found Glen's head charred. Um, as well so you you know over a year goes by and they're you know going back and forth on who the murderer of Glenn was and all of this and after about two years uh, Katie had finally moved on with her life she had grieved for the loss of her husband and moved on and she met someone by the name of W. Greg and remarried Exactly three days after her marriage to Mr. Gregg, she received a phone call stating that they had found Glenn Mays alive and that he was in the jail. She did not believe this news. Um, it was a great shock to her, so much so that she called her brother and told her brother, please go find out why, what they're doing to me, why they're doing this to me. And his brother goes and confirms that, in fact, her husband is living and he's in jail. I guess he had gotten into some, some financial situations and had been writing bad checks. And um, I think there was a forgery charge. I'm not really sure what all charges he was up for. But they had found Glenn. It was either in Virginia or West Virginia. And he was at a mine working, you know, supervising a mine. And he was going by an alias of J.L. Jones. <coughs> <coughs> when I asked, when questioned whose body was 
found in his cabin. At first, he was very comical about the whole situation and he would just laugh it off and say i don't believe you found a body i don't know who burned down my cabin i didn't know my cabin was burnt down um the last time i was there my cabin was fine and um so they go on to talk to him about his wife and um ask him if he's aware that his wife had remarried at which point he laughed and was like if she's remarried then that's fine with me and um but later, some of the other articles I find where he's being interviewed and questioned, he he seems very, um, like he loved his wife and was sorry for what he did to her and that she deserved to have a good life, basically. I'm, I'm rephrasing. I don't have the articles right in front of me, but he was basically saying that um, it was his fault that he abandoned her and she deserved to be happy. Um... So, Katie did fall for a, um, annulment or a divorce from Glenn B. Mays. And, um, some time went on and Glenn actually did pass away in 1928. And he was buried in Newberry, South Carolina in the family cemetery where he was originally from. Now, from this crazy story, I have questions. I really want to know, was that actually uh, the body of a baby calf, like some of these articles stated, that they had a funeral for and buried in the cemetery in Knoxville? Because I did find one article that stated something along the lines of they weren't going to exhume the body after they found him. They weren't going to exhume the body. And then some of the articles went on to say that it was a baby calf that Glenn had slaughtered and um, burned to the point that they couldn't distinguish the difference between a calf's body and a human body in this fire. Um, I'm just really curious if Greenwood Cemetery still has this baby cow buried there. Or even if it was a baby cow. I don't know. Have you guys ever heard this story before? Glenn B. Mays. In um, the Titus area. His mind ceased operation after he disappeared. Um, but that's the story I have today. And as always, if you like the content of my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you hit the little bell button, you'll be notified anytime I upload any new videos. And again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.